Hello and welcome to module 6.2. In this video, we're going to look at present and future GPS satellites and focus on what's particular to the GPS constellation's orbits. So you'll remember this picture shows you the location or at least the altitude of all satellites. And right in the middle, we have GPS in a medium Earth orbit. So to explain that a little bit more, I'm going to begin with a, a short animation of a geostationary satellite. And we pick a particular SBAS satellite, which is a, a part of the augmentation system for GPS. So uh, you can see it there. This is indeed one of the SBAS satellites, and that's at the geostationary orbital altitude, which is chosen so that the orbital period matches the rotation period of the Earth. And if you have such an altitude and you put the satellite in the equatorial plane, as shown here, then what happens as the satellite orbits is that the Earth rotates underneath it at the same rate, and the satellite appears to stay in the same place in the sky. So this is the first of several videos that'll, that'll show you simulations of what's going on. And th the way to look at these is to begin by looking at the satellite. Where does it begin? So here, here's the satellite. And what are we looking at at the Earth? There's North America. Yes, South America. So we've got North America in the middle of the screen. We're looking down on it. So remember that. And let's watch how this simulation goes. You see the satellite orbiting, you see the Earth rotating, and you can see that they're both going at the same rate. So if you were standing in the Americas looking at that satellite, it would appear to stay in the same place in the sky. And that's why all the television satellites, all the communication satellites sit in that same orbit. Um, they, they would fill this up. And there are over 400 of them all around there, all following each other around in the sky. So that's a geostationary orbit. And so that kind of helps us see what GPS orbit looks like. So we'll bring up the GPS orbit. And now we'll run this same simulation again, but actually have a, a GPS satellite going around. So that's the actual orbit of a GPS satellite. And let's watch that go and see how it behaves compared to the geostationary satellite. So there, the geos now you'll see the geostationary satellite is halfway around. The GPS satellite did one full orbit and another full orbit. So what you're seeing is that because the GPS satellite has a lower altitude because of Kepler's laws, it has to go faster. And so it's orbiting twice as fast as the geostationary satellite. And after two orbits, it's back where it started. The Earth is back where it started. And so the whole thing will repeat every day. And that's the reason the GPS satellites are at their particular orbit. GPS was the first global navigation satellite system. And so the GPS designers chose that orbit altitude so that the GPS satellites repeat every day. But what do we mean by every day exactly? And so to, to be more precise, we must revisit this idea of sidereal day, which you, which you looked at when you looked at the orbits. But I just need to revisit it for you before we go on talking about all these different satellite systems. So what is a sidereal day? Again, a sidereal day is how long it takes the Earth to rotate 360 degrees. Now, the first time you hear that, you might say, oh, I, I know that. That's 24 hours. Well, not exactly, because if the Earth were just sitting there in space and rotated 360 degrees, that would be 24 hours. But that's not what happens. While the Earth rotates on its axis, it's also orbiting the Sun. And so it actually looks like this. So there's 360 degree rotation. And this yellow line is Greenwich. And so if you imagine you were standing on the Greenwich meridian, You'll notice now that with respect to the distant stars or inertial, an inertial frame, you have rotated 360 degrees, but you're not facing back towards the sun. So if it were noon over here, which it is, 
because the sun's directly overhead, it's not yet noon over here because you're not facing the sun. The sun's no longer directly overhead. So when will it be noon? Well, a little bit later. You'll have to rotate a little bit more. Now the sun's directly overhead, and that is 24 hours. That's the definition of 24 hours. A solar day is how long it takes the Earth to rotate so that the sun appears back where it was at the same longitude as the previous day. So from that, we can see that a sidereal day is less than a solar day by a certain amount. Now, by how much, you, you might know this answer. You might remember it, but in the spirit of not having to remember anything, just understanding anything, I'll show you a little trick. You notice it rotates a little bit extra, and this happens 365 times in a year. The Earth has to rotate all the way around the sun in a year. So the amount extra that it has to rotate times 365 gives us one whole extra rotation. And so from that, we can infer that a sidereal day is that much less than a solar day, 1 365th. And so that brings us to this little quiz, which is for you to work out how long is a sidereal day to the nearest minute. And I, it's a simple calculation, but I want you to do it because that's going to help you remember. So welcome back. And uh, so by now, you would have figured out that the 1 365th of a day is f to the nearest minute, four minutes. And you would have seen it's a few seconds different from four minutes. But for our purposes, it's enough to go to the nearest minute. And so we, we, we've now seen that the GPS satellite, by having an orbit period of exactly half a sidereal day, which it does. so we half a sidereal day, we, we can see very clearly that after two orbits, the Earth is back where it started in inertial space because it's spun around once, one sidereal day. The GPS satellite after two orbits is back where it started. And so the, everything repeats every sidereal day. That's quite simple to see. And so that's the, something that's special to GPS and different for all the other systems. And we'll see how in the following videos. And so finally, we just show the picture of all the GPS orbits and, and summarize them like this. And we'll show the same kind of picture for all the different constellations. And so you can get a good feel as we work, work through this module of how they are similar and different from each other. So the things we choose to highlight here are the, the total number of satellites, there are currently 31 GPS satellites in operation. There have been approximately 31, meaning 30, 31, or 32, and varying as certain satellites are launched or, or taken offline. Uh, however, it is known as a, quote, 24-plus constellation. And that's because the guaranteed minimum number that the Air Force, US Air Force guarantees they will provide to you, this is in the interface uh, specification that they provide, they say there will always be 24 satellites. So they maintain the system at 30, but as satellites get old, it's possible they could go back to 24. Uh, and so it's known as the 24 plus constellation. Although over the last several years, the system has maintained at 30. So it's a reasonable guess that it will continue to be maintained at 30, but it's not a guarantee. So that's the number of satellites. There are six planes, about five satellites in each plane. Of course, one of them has to have six to get 31. Each plane is inclined at 55 degree inclination. And the consequence of that is that as the satellite orbits and the Earth rotates underneath, the highest point on the Earth that a satellite can get to while still directly overhead is 55 degrees latitude and minus 55 degrees latitude and so on. And as the satellite orbits and the Earth spins underneath, you, because the Earth's spinning at a different rate, as we just saw in the video, you, you get a line on the Earth for each satellite that looks very much like the line on a tennis ball. So if you imagine that line, a seam on a tennis ball, that's, that's what each satellite traces out on the Earth. If we try to follow one here, it would look like this. And it would be the same on the other side. And that's the consequence of that's what that is, is the point directly beneath the satellite as the satellite orbits and the Earth spins underneath it. And so you can see all those black lines shown. That's the, the ground trace of all the satellites. And then because GPS has this very special half sidereal day period, those lines repeat 
every day. And so the whole constellation appears to be in exactly the same place after one sidereal day and, and another sidereal day and so on. And then GPS has the SBAS system, the space-based augmentation system, to augment it made up of the WAS satellites from the United States, EGNOS from the European Union, and MSAS from Japan. And these are all in an equatorial orbit, a geostationary orbit, as we saw before. And so they each appear to stay stationary over whichever particular territory they were launched. And of course, the WIRE satellites serve North America, EGNOS satellites serve Europe, and MSAS are over East Asia.